Hello, Namaskar viewers. I am Sanjeev Pandya, welcoming you to this week's episode of the Business Talk with AJ. This weekly show is brought to you by Sai CPS Services, a complete professional accounting firm with multiple locations in the state of New Jersey can assist you with any tax matters, whether it's a personal or corporate, they can help you to navigate you in the right direction to make sure your taxes are filed right. They're knowledgeable, on-hand, experienced CPAs can advise you and guide you further with your tax planning matters. And not only tax matters, you know, if you need uh, payroll services, uh, bookkeeping services, virtual CEO or virtual CFO, Science CPA services can make it all possible for you. You can reach them at 908-380-6876 or visit sciencecpaservices.com. With that note, I'd like to welcome Mr. AJ Kumar of Science CPA services to the show. AJ, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you for the kind introduction. Sure, very well. Thank you so very much. Last week, we started to talk about the uh, year-end tax planning and everything, and it was for a small business. And after getting a, you know amazing response from small businesses, let's take that forward and let's talk about year-end tax planning for individuals. That also is very important because you know the majority of uh, tax returns are filed by individuals. So, viewers, in this episode, we're going to go step by step. What are the year-end planning uh, strategies that you should keep in mind uh, as an individual taxpayer? All absolutely. Right? So, let's start with um, you know retirement planning. Uh, absolutely, Sanjeevji. So, everybody wants to save taxes. We get a lot of people during the tax season requesting one thing only, requesting lowering the tax liability. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we end up saying, Sanjeevji, it is too late for the last year. See, 2024 taxes are going to be filed in April 2025. But a lot of those changes have to happen in 2024, for 2024, within the year. Otherwise, they are not applicable for 2024. So, between October, November and December, after 15th October, after the tax season is over, this is the time when a lot of people are only focusing on tax planning. Last week, we brought in a few ideas for small business tax planning. In today's episode, we'll try to introduce few ideas for individual tax planning. And as you said, let's start with retirement planning. So if you have a job and if your business, if your uh, employer is offering 401k, that's the very first step. You should try to maximize the 401k contribution and the 401k limit for 2024 is $23,000 if you are under 50. If you are over 50, you have additional funding that you can do. Then you have 7500 extra. So for somebody over 50, the 401k limit becomes $30,500. What if the business is not offering 401k? What if your employer is not offering 401k? Even then you have some options. Then consider IRA. It could be traditional IRA, it could be Roth IRA. So traditional IRA, you get the tax saving now, but you pay taxes when you take the money at the time of retirement. Roth IRA, you choose not to take the tax savings now, but you don't pay taxes when you take the money out. So see what makes sense in your case. Uh, do you, are you temporarily in a higher income tax bracket because you got some bonuses or some other income? or this is a business as usual. So decide what makes sense for you. There is no fixed formula for traditional or Roth IRA. You want to also so look into backdoor, backdoor Roth IRA. The concept is when people don't qualify for Roth IRA, they first contribute the money into traditional IRA and then convert it into Roth IRA from traditional IRA. They have it rolled over to Roth IRA. So when they contribute, it's tax deductible. When they roll it over, it becomes taxable. So it washes each other out. So even though they don't really have the, the contribution limit for Roth IRA, by going around, and that's why the concept is referred as backdoor Roth IRA. So there are a lot of retirement account options, Sanjeevji, mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. can look into, mm -hmm. even when they don't have businesses. If you have small businesses, you have a lot of other options that we covered in the last uh, uh, week's episode. You have SCP, you can do 401k, depending on what type of situation you have, you can do 457, you can do 403b. There are a lot of other options that you have if you have a small business. But even if you have no business, you should still look into your retirement options. All right, so just to conclude on that part, you know, these options that AJ just mentioned, 401k, uh, 
uh, regular IRA and a Roth IRA. These are the best options and these, um, these three options would be suitable to anyone out there. You know, it's not like one retirement plan is for everybody. You have all these three options. And as, as AJ mentioned, that if you can go into Roth IRA for whatever the limits or whatever the, 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 the limitations are, you can go into regular IRA, which is open for everybody. And you have an opportunity to convert to Roth IRA. So do keep that in the mind. And I also want to add whatever changes that you want to make and you want to reduce your tax liability for this year, please take action right now and give Science CPA Services a call right now because if you put your money into any one of those plans right now before December 31st, that way you can reduce your tax liability and then you can enjoy the savings that you have in retirement. And um, you know, AJ, I just want to add one thing. It may not be a bad idea to put in the stocks because the stock market is doing amazingly well. Absolutely. We have, so we have another uh, yeah. plan around it. Mm. We call it tax loss harvesting. Just because the, the stock market is in turmoil, a lot mm. of people lose some money. Mm. And they have been carrying this money, mm. carrying the loss. See, the trick is the losses cannot be claimed more than $3,000 than the gain. Mm. The maximum loss deduction is $3,000. So what if you have a large loss in selling a property or selling a stock market? It sort of carries forward. In that's the time when you want to look at the stock market, hey, these stocks are doing very well. If I sell these stocks, I'll have this much gain, but I'm carrying forward so much losses. So the gain becomes non-taxable uh, because of uh, the carry forward of the losses. They can offset each other. So the concept is referred as tax loss harvesting. If you have losses in the stock market, carry forward losses, try to identify the stocks where you have made money, or vice versa, if you have a lot of gains in the stock market because you had to sell some stocks or a property, try to find out the stocks where you are losing money Correct. so that you can offset each other. Yep. So, so these are the best things. Now, let's move on to the next one, which is investment strategies. And that's important. That is the one we are stressing in our show that this is the time right now to look into investment strategies and the options to reduce your tax liability, correct? Uh, absolutely. So. Uh, when we think about the investment strategies in AUG, a lot of time we are, we are thinking about tax deferral strategies as mm -hmm. opposed to tax saving strategies. Yes. As much as you want to invest into qualified plans, uh, we talked about 401k, we talked about traditional IRA, there are non-qualified plans as well. Non-qualified plans, for example, Roth IRA, where you don't really get the tax saving. There are a lot of insurance products out there in the market where you can do some contributions every month, every so often, and you create a nest egg. A lot of time, especially if it's related to the insurance product, those products create a cash flow that's untouchable even by the creditors. If somebody is coming behind you, somebody is trying to sue you, they wouldn't be able to touch that money. So make sure you understand your options. Also remember, at the end of next year, depending on which party comes in the, uh, in the election, at the end of next year, a lot of tax provisions are scheduled to expire. On December 31st, 2025, not this year, but the next year, a lot of tax breaks will be removed. Uh, again, it depends on which political party uh, comes in, uh, in power. But you have to be thinking about it. You have to be planning accordingly. You have to know your option. So you can do the right thing. You can make the right decisions. Absolutely. Good point. Okay. So then um, let's move on to the next one, which is also, you know, a very uh, kind of gray area. It's called charitable uh, deductions. Well, it's, mm -hmm. there is no gray area. Mm -hmm. You keep it black and white. Charitable contribution is a beautiful thing. You are blessed to have what you have. You have a cause close to your heart. You give money to the charity anyway. What we are requesting is just track it. Keep proper receipt around it. That's where I say it's a great idea because you need right. to keep receipts and not every place would give you receipt. Let's well, say. If, you, if you explain mm. to them properly, mm. we have a lot of temples, churches, mosques, our clients, and we take time to explain to them that it's in their benefit to give proper receipts Correct. to the donors. And now you're donating money anyway. Mm. You just need the discipline. And you say, what if they're not giving any receipt? They don't give us any receipt. You create a separate bank account where you have money going out of that account only, a separate checking account. All my donations will go out of that account. And then you don't give cash, you write check. 
in that case you have a ready-made proof these are my cancelled checks. these are my cast checks that i gave to these temples mosques, churches gurdwara so all these uh, organizations you just need the proper proof to claim the charitable contribution just remember it's, it's, it's very important to know when you have appreciated stocks appreciated asset let's say take an example you bought a stock for ten dollars now the value of the stock is fifty dollars if you sell this stock you have to pay tax on forty dollars and then you donate this fifty dollars instead of donating the the fifty dollars cash if you donate the stock itself if you donate the asset itself you get the benefit of fifty dollars the value of the stock market value current market value and you don't have to pay any capital gain taxes the concept is referred as appreciated stock donation appreciated means increased in the value so when you have an appreciated stock you make sure you don't cash it first you donate the asset now you flip the example how about the depreciated stock if a stock has gone down in the market then what should you do in that case you should sell the stock first meaning get the cash first so you can claim the losses and then you donate the money the point here is you know what you know make sure you have the right discipline for man for maintaining all the receipts and work with an accountant especially when you're thinking about large donation amounts make sure you work with an accountant make sure you work with somebody who understand the rules the laws to keep you safe to keep you on the right side of the law and to make sure you get the maximum advantage around the donation all from right. the charitable okay. contributions all right this is i mean you explain this in a very broad um, you know a uh, manner of when it comes to charitable contributions okay let's move on next is estate and the tax planning uh, absolutely sanjeev ji so estate uh, tax limits are right now 13.6 million per person uh, if you do uh, 706 portability filing you can port the limit from one spouse to other spouse which gives you almost 27 million dollars in the estate taxes so if your net worth right now is under 10 million dollars probably it's not the issue for you but if your net worth is increasing and then you have a situation where you probably in your lifetime will have more than the, the asset that are uh, exempt in that case you need to create a trust and estate you need to be worrying about the estate planning again i want to remind you that all these limits are set to expire at the end of 2025 in that case the estate limit is expected to go down from 13.6 million to 7 million dollars so make sure you have the right plan and you don't really see that much discussion about estate and tax planning the trust planning right now depending on which government comes in power and if the limit does go to 7 million you will see a lot of rush around estate planning next year mm. because that's when the limit is expiring okay a lot of people are not talking about it right now people are still unsure about the political situation but next year same time you will see a lot of hush about the estate so planning. obviously that's going to be expired in 2025 because that was put in by you know then president donald right. trump in effect so um in light of that matter that you just discussed can we perhaps do a show after the election when the results are out to see that whoever comes in the power, whichever party, either Democrat Party retains, very good idea. retains their power or Republican Party comes in, I right? think it's a very good idea. I think after we should the show, really, yes. after the election, yeah. we can look at based on this political party, mm. where the tax planning is going to go Correct. and knowing what you know, what can you do in next six weeks, four to there six weeks, go. yes, okay, uh, to make so, a difference to your tax situation? All right, <clears throat> we'll definitely do that. We'll give you more information on that. But it's time for us to take a short break. Once we come back, we're going to continue this uh, tax planning strategies for individuals. Stay with us. Welcome back to the second half of the Business Talk with AJ. In case if you have just joined us, this week we're talking about tax planning strategies for individuals. You may have watched our last week's show, which was tax planning strategies for small businesses. And we're continuing that very popular topic. And now we are talking about tax planning strategies for individuals. Mr. AJ Kumar, CPA and MBA with Science CPA Services is giving his insight and input and sharing his valuable suggestions with us. So we, meaning we individuals, can plan our tax 
for the year 2024. And the plan is between now, we, we, you have less than two months now. So till December 31st, you can plan, park your money wherever you want to park in order to reduce tax liability. Let's continue that topic forward. And now we're going to talk about education credits and deductions. Absolutely. AOTC and LIL. Yes, LLC, oh, Lifetime LLC. Learning Credit hmm. and American Opportunity Tax Credit. So the concept is uh, if you are continuously learning uh, and there is no age limit on a lifetime learning credit, you can invest into your own education and the government will give you up to $2,000 per year per tax return. Again, this is not per person, it's per tax return. On the other hand, American Opportunity Tax Credit is $2,500 per person, not per tax return. But again, these limits are uh, based on the amount of money you're spending. So you have to spend at least this much money to get the credit. The question that we are typically asked, Sanjeevji, mm. uh, I'm spending $10,000. How much credit should I be getting? Well, once you reach that limit, that's the maximum. Meaning you spend $10,000 on your education, or you spend $20,000 on your education, the credit is the same. But again, if you are investing money in your own education, which you should be doing anyway, all the more reasons to maintain the receipt, take those receipts to the accountant and see if you qualify for AOTC, American Opportunity Tax Credit, or Lifetime Learning Credit. Okay. Now, which one has been more popular since you filed so many tax returns? Which one you have seen um, uh, the more better one relevant to most of the individuals? So, AOTC gives you more money, ah. but LLC applies to everybody. Okay. So, we see more people using LLC, lifetime learning credit, than AOTC. But, I mean, if you qualify, and you can qualify for both. Hmm. It's not either or. So, uh, LLC, everybody should be looking into. Lifetime learning credit, you go for any education, any courses, you buy books, you buy education material, it doesn't have to be live classes. Could be computer-based training, could be uh, books, online training, phone training, whatever you have. And see if you qualify for LLC, lifetime learning credit. Okay, interesting. Now. Solar power obviously is in the talks and uh, you know, the federal credit, state credit, mainly state credit that you get and everything else because it's an energy efficient home that you want to want to have. What are the deductions for the energy efficient home thing in the tax return? Well, solar panel is a different concept mm. and energy efficient home credit is a different concept. Mm. So when we say energy efficient home, we are talking about mainly insulation in the ceiling. We are talking about high efficient water heater, high efficient electric appliances, things that improve the efficiency in energy efficiency of the home. That's referred as the residential home efficiency credit. That's a different concept altogether. Solar credit is when you install the solar panels at your home or uh, install solar panels at your commercial property. In those cases, the solar panel company will give you as much as 30% of the cost as tax credit that you can claim on your tax return. A lot of times, Sanjeevji, the best thing is you can sell that credit to the company that's selling you the solar panel. Hmm. So instead of you taking the credit from the government, they will be worrying about the credit, they can take the credit and they can just reduce the price for you right up front. But solar panel is slightly different. I mean, you are 100% right. Solar panel, there is a lot of talks about solar panel, not as much talk about uh, residential energy efficient uh, tax credit. Hmm. Residential energy efficient tax credit is mainly related to replacing water heater, replacing HVAC system. Correct. So if you have to replace the HVAC system, why not buy one that qualifies for energy efficiency credit? Hmm. If you are investing money into insulation of your ceiling, why not keep those receipts and give it to the accountant to make sure you get the right credit around it? Okay, interesting. So, you know, I really wanted to bring this solar angle because uh, taxpayers do want to know absolutely, what it's Absolutely, absolutely, 100%. Okay, so now let's go to miscellaneous deductions. There of are course. so many miscellaneous deductions. It's better to give them um, the idea of miscellaneous uh, Absolutely. So a lot of these miscellaneous deduction goes on a Schedule A, itemized deduction. And it starts with medical expenses. And we get a lot of people telling us, oh, the medical expenses have to be in excess of 7.5% before they can be claimed. 
and I politely tell them, even if they're not more than 7.5%, put it on your tax return. First, you create the history that you have medical expenses. Secondly, you will get some benefit from the state. So for federal tax return, the medical expenses have to be more than 7.5% in order to get, get you any benefit or be part of that itemized schedule. But even if you don't have more than 7.5% of medical expenses, please put it on the tax return. You will get some money back from the state and it creates a history around it that this is the, the normal medical expense for this tax return, for this couple. The next thing you see over there is the mortgage interest. Mortgage interest is limited to 750,000 of indebtedness. Meaning if your mortgage amount is more than 750,000, then you have to calculate how much you qualify as an interest deduction. Next thing we see the property tax, which is limited to $10,000 right now. There are a lot of talks about removing that ceiling, but for the time being, at least for this year, state and local taxes, including the property tax, is limited to 10,000. The next schedule you will see over there is the charitable contribution. Then you have gambling losses, Again, gambling losses is tax deductible. Not a lot of people understand that. Not a lot of people know it. Gambling losses are limited to the extent of gambling income. The problem here is when you have gambling income, the whole wide world knows it. How so? Because the casino is filing a 1099 to IRS and to the state. So the IRS already knows that you have the gambling income. But when you're losing money in the casino, nobody knows about it. Nobody's filing any report. Nobody's filing any 1099 or any such report to say, this guy lost some money. The onus, the responsibility remains on you to say, I won this much money, but this is the money that I had invested or this is the money I had played. And you pay taxes only on the difference. And a lot of times you will find yourself in a situation when your losses are more than the income. In that case, you are not paying any tax on the income, but again, you have to report it. If you don't report it, then you will get a notice that this income is not reported and this is what you owe. So gambling losses are tax deductible to the extent of gambling income. So there are a lot of miscellaneous deduction. The key here is make sure you maintain proper receipts. You don't want to be claiming any expense, any deduction that you cannot substantiate on a later date. IRS has six years after filing the taxes to come back to you to say, please show us the proof, provide the receipt. And you want to make sure that you have proper receipts around it. Okay, so that is a good to know from Mr. Directions. And now, plan for major life events. Absolutely. They are so, unpredictable, but of you can plan for something. Well, if you know that you are going through, for example, a divorce, or if you, mm. let's keep it positive, if you know you are going to get married, mm. or if you know your children are moving out because they are old and they Correct. just found a job, there could be plethora of such situations. There could be, be a lot of major life-changing event that you have, good or sometimes not so good, but make sure you keep the tax angle in mind. Make sure you know what this life event is going to be and how is this life event going to impact your taxes. And whatever the situation is, you bring into the accountant knowledge, ask them what changes you should be making right now to accommodate this life-changing event, to make sure you get the best advantage, most benefit around this life-changing event. So planning is the key when it comes to the major life-changing event, and they're not all bad. A marriage could be there. I mean, I'm not sure if marriage is good or bad, but nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> kidding aside, make sure you plan for these life-changing events when it comes to taxes. When you say that marriage is good or bad, you're not sure about that. Do you see more uh, tax returns with the divorce status or you see more tax well, returns with it's marriage? it's changing now. Uh, the, the truth is, I mean, kidding aside, we did not have that many divorce cases in the mm. ethnic community hearing about divorces were not as common as right. it's getting now. Okay. So over the last 10 years, we see more and more people moving towards that direction as opposed to what we used to see 10 years ago. For, for that matter, let me just ask you a question. There are, you know, status. Let's talk about tax filing status. You of have course. single, you have a widow, you have, a, widower. Yeah, you have a head of the household, you, have, the head of you household. have married filing jointly, you have married filing separately. That's right. These are the five statuses. Mm -hmm. There is no more than that. There's no more. Why can't we have one more saying married filing happily? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I mean, if you are doing married filing joint, uh -huh. we are assuming you are happy. If you are doing married filing separate, 
We are assuming <laughs> it's the other way around. There should be two more standards, <laughs> merit filing happily, merit filing unhappily. Because merit filing jointly doesn't really necessarily mean that you are merit filing happily. You know? I hear you. <laughs> I, I do. Anyway, just a little humor I wanted to add. Let's go to one of the most... This is the topic that I know it's a, it's, it's a widely uh, known topic and uh, you know people really want to know more and more on this. It's called FBAR. Absolutely. Mm. So FBAR stands for Foreign Bank Account Reporting. Right. Uh, the rule around FBAR is if you have foreign bank accounts and if you had more than $10,000 in all the bank accounts combined together at any given point of time, not at the end of the year. Let's say you sent $50,000 from US to India to buy a property. For one day, you had $50,000 in your account. And then you paid the dealer, or paid the property dealer, or bought the house. But for one day, you had more than $10,000 in that account. Or other situation. You have $5,000 in Kendra Bank, $2,000 in Punjab National Bank, $3,000 in ICICI Bank. All of them added together, at one point of time, you had more than $10,000. You have the filing obligation. Take another example. You have $10,000 in ICICI, then you moved the same money into Punjab National Bank, then you moved the same money into Kendra Bank. At the end of the year, you have the obligation to report all the three banks. And you have to report the maximum amount in each account. So in, even though you had only $10,000, you're reporting 10,000 in ICICI, 10,000 in Punjab National Bank, 10,000 in Canada Bank. The good thing with Akbar is that there is no tax consequences around it. Meaning, reporting higher or lower amount does not create a tax liability for you. The rule is very simple. You have to report all the bank accounts and you have to report the maximum amount in each account if you trigger the filing obligation. How, the, how do you trigger the filing obligation? If you had more than $10,000, in all the bank accounts combined together at any given point of time. That's the FBAR filing. All right, very interesting. And like I say, FBAR filing, the entire subject is very deep and uh, very informative. So any information, any ad additional information that you need, you can contact Science CPA Services or even for any one of these uh, tax planning strategies that was discussed, you can contact Science CPA Services to see which one suits you better. And this is the right time to do it. Do not wait for January 1st or January, say I can do it next year. No, you have to plan it by the December 31st to reduce your tax liability because Science CPA Services believes in filing your taxes right. And that was the show all about year-end tax planning strategies for individuals. AJ, thank you so very of much. Course, of course. Until we meet again, same place, same time. Remember, this is the October um, end of October. Here we are. And I guess when we meet again next week, AJ, we'll election, have election would have been over. Absolutely. And we, in the next episode, we'll talk about which of our party wins, what are their tax plans. And what can you do now, before the end of the year, to create a difference to your tax situation depending on the election result? All right. Very interesting. Okay, so November 7th, I think next Thursday is November 7th, because November Absolutely. 5th is election, that's a Tuesday, right? So 6th and 7th, that's the 7th, and we're gonna have it. But AJ, just a last question. Election results could, may not be final for a couple of days because of mail-in balance and Well, everything. we'll see how it looks. Yes. And then we'll exactly. explain both sides of the equation so our viewers understand where they stand and how it's going to go for that. You got it. Okay, with that note, we come to an end of this week's episode. Uh, remember, viewers, if you are a citizen, do exercise your right. That's your patriotic duty. Please go out and vote. Whatever party that you believe in, whatever party, candidate that you want to support, but please go out and vote. That's a strong message for South Asian community because our community involves in politics, but they never go out to vote. So please support any candidate that you believe in because think about your future, think about country, your future, your children's future, and everything else. And you decide what makes sense for you. So go out and vote, and that's the message that I'd like to give to all of you. AJ, you like to say something about that? Well, absolutely. So uh, before the year end, if you can spend a couple of hours on your tax situation, you can make a huge difference in your tax liability. Mm. I mean, as much as we all, including me, do not want to pay the taxes, it's a necessary evil. You have to pay the taxes. Investing some time now will be very helpful. 
All right. Until we see you again, same place, same time. You do take care of yourself and have a happy and smiling days ahead. So long. Thank you.